go forth with it a lot of times. We just, we just, okay, I applied, mm -hmm. you know, I, I did all this stuff in the past, I done went to school in the past and all that, so I'm good. And we don't really prepare ourselves. It's, it's like a constant moving, mm -hmm. uh, a networking, talking to this person, talking to that person, even in a natural sense, mm -hmm. you know. And, and so those are the things there uh, uh, that we have to do. But, but understand your prayer, it's not wrong to pray, God, you know, I, you know, I apply for this job, you know, Hopefully I can get it. You know, I pray that I'm able to get this job. It, I'm not saying that's necessarily wrong, yeah. but look at it this way. What is the benefit of God blessing you mm -hmm. with that job? Mm -hmm. What is it? Because remember now, we, 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 Paul says we don't, we ask for things that we ought not, we, we don't know we ought to pray for. And that's the word ought and should. Those words are going to come up a lot when you understand the grace doctrine. Mm -hmm. Ought and should, as opposed to must. Yeah. Okay? And so what happens is, a lot of times now, I look at things or try to look at things from a scriptural perspective, even in my natural world, okay? Which means that if it comes to a job or if it comes to a, a, a situation, okay, what would, why, what, what would it benefit me to pray for a job and then God bless me with the job? Now, I can fool myself into yeah. saying that, uh, uh, well, if I'm around these people at this job, I can touch so many souls. Mm -hmm. You can yeah. touch those souls when they come out of the job in the parking lot. Right, right. You see that? And, and so what happens is, so, <laughs> so you begin to pray for those things. But again, is it wrong to pray for it? God bless you with the job you apply for? Not at all. In spiritual sense, though, it ain't nothing to really pray about. Now, and again, what I would do is I would thank God. Yeah. For the opportunity to even apply. I would thank God for the outcome, no matter what it is, okay, as I pray for the job. God, I'm just making my request made known unto you. Because uh, and, and remember now, God knows your heart. Yeah. So in spite of what happens on the job, you know, I'm just asking that you touch the situation, yeah. right? In spite of what happens on the job, I'm, I'm thanking you in advance. You see that? Now your prayer becomes one of, of his will, mm -hmm. not just yours. Because you want that job selfishly, yeah. right? Not you as in, you know, I'm just saying you. Mm -hmm. When you apply, you want that job, yeah. you're right? That, that's a job. You obviously applied for it, right? And then because you, most of the time, we don't pray and say, God, which job should I apply for? Yeah. We only pray to him for to give us the one we want. Mm -hmm. Like you treat yourself uh, in the same I'm going to give God glory. Exactly. Glory. I'm going to give you glory, God, because <laughs> you're going to give me the job that I want. Baseball yeah, <laughs> exactly, right? And so oftentimes the job that you want only benefits you. Yeah. Now, you could be a blessing to others based on the job you get because the amount of money you make. But really, that benefits you. Right. You see that? And that's more of a selfish prayer, right? Again, not bad and sinful, but just selfish, okay? And even, even with that, that's a heart issue. God already knew what you was going to do when you got that job before you got it. If you're making $20,000 a year and you have a problem giving, what you going to do when you're making $20 million a year? Mm -hmm. Are you, it's going to be more difficult for you to give yeah. 10 or 15% of that to the charity than it is for you to take out a dollar. And, you know, yeah. he already knows. And, yeah. and, and part of the other thing is I think we all lose sight of is some of the stuff that we pray for is scripturally already written that we don't have to pray for. Mm -hmm. yeah. For example, um, there's a scripture that says that God has given us the power to get our own wealth. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no point in asking God to bless me with an opportunity for me to go get money. He's already given me the power to do that. Yeah. Now, yeah. you might pray for that situation. Yeah. You might pray and, and give thanks for um put him in a position to obtain this. Mm -hmm. But if scripture tells me I have the power to get wealth, mm -hmm. why am I going to go and ask God for it? Uh, uh, and because a lot of times now, a lot of times we, we confuse the natural wisdom with spiritual wisdom. We confuse natural knowledge with spiritual knowledge. Uh, uh, again, if you're, a, if you're in your right mind, okay, uh, and I was I tell the kids this all the time. I don't believe there's a thing as a dumb kid. Now I, there's me mentally challenged children, but but anybody with a right mind, I don't think they're dumb. I just think it has to do with application, okay? Uh, because some some children learn at a different pace than other children, 
Okay, so I may be able to learn it because you say one times one is one, and I know that all, every time now I know it. A uh, other kid might need pictures, might need a visual example. Uh, he may need a different application, okay, which a lot of times in school you may not have time to do that. Okay, and so that's why even at home, but I don't think there's a such thing as a dumb kid. I think because even the smart people uh, 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 make dumb decisions, okay, so I, I, I just think it's an uh, 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 application thing. I was going to say, and, and I'm not looking for a right or wrong answer, but oftentimes I ask God to help me to be a good steward of mm -hmm. what you placed uh -huh. in my care. Uh -huh. uh, you know how on your job you have access to so to, to different things, uh -huh. but you want to do the right thing. Uh -huh. So I, I ask God to help me to be a good steward of uh -huh. over what you've placed me over. Uh -huh. and that's you know, when question. making decisions whether I'm going to help somebody pay their electric bill or help somebody pay their rent. I ask God to help me to make the decision. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and that's although I know I have the authority, authority the ability to do it. I want to do, do the right thing. Exactly, exactly. I want to do the right thing. And, and, and that's good because, of, because your prayer is not selfish. Because again, you can make the choice to do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. We all can make choices, whatever capacity of life we walk, we all can make choices to do whatever we want to do. Okay? Uh, but the right choice is the godly choice. Okay? And that godly choice is seeking the benefit of others. That's charity, right? Seeking the benefit of others. All right? And, and so even with that, we, we, that, that's a great prayer. Because a lot of times we want, 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 but we don't know how to appreciate what we have, have, have. <laughs> you, you see that? And so that becomes an issue, okay? And so we, uh, kind of similar to what you we we're praying for more, more stuff. And less, less spiritual knowledge. We're praying a lot for more and more things and tangible things, the things that people could take from us and that's going to make us upset. we praying more for that, okay? You can't put in an armored car and funeral for that. Exactly. You know, all these things that we, we, we not want to be able to take out when we leave. Again, now, don't, don't, I don't want people to, you know, misconstrue what I'm saying. If you have the money to go buy you a nice car, a nice house, by all means, go do that, okay? All right, if you want to pray about that, go all, by all means, go. But I'm saying should and ought to, okay? Because there's no benefit in praying for the new car to get to work. Uh, I want, God, I just want this BMW to get me to, to and from work because I don't have a car. Well, you could get the lemon down the street that's going to get you to A to B. Or take the bus. Or take the bus that gets you from A to B, public transportation. But yet you praying for the BMW. Right, because they say, well, the, if you don't pray and ask God, you might as well ask okay. him for the best because he's a God that's going to, come on, man. If you really want to get to work, you'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. Purpose, true. And, and you know what, oftentimes, and I, you know, I don't want to keep talking about my job, but Deborah, you know how it goes. Oftentimes, people will set goals that they want housing. Okay, I'm living with my sister, me and the kids. But you don't have a job, no income. So I tell the people that are, you know, my staff, I say, well, we're not going to make that a goal until they get a job. <laughs> because the first question I'm going to ask is, so how are we going to pay for it? Because we may be able to help you get in it, but who's going to help you next month with the income? Exactly. So you got to use wisdom in, in, in knowing how to do certain things. Why am I going to put a goal? It's for you to get a house and you don't have the means to pay for it. Exactly. And the landlord no, going to no. ask you the same thing. The landlord going to want to be the property owner. Yeah. 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 And you people going to ask you the same thing. You don't want them to set up the fell. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. Absolutely. That's what I, I, had, uh, I had somebody ask me. Somebody sent me a video uh, uh, of their son playing football. Uh, and uh, it made me think about it. And they was like, you know, he, I think he just need a little work done. I watched the video and I'm thinking to myself, I ain't no miracle worker by no means. <laughs> I can't help him. You know, he's not in a position that I can help him, you know. And, 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 and most times that people want these things, but the, you know, that sometimes we have limitations. We're human, okay? We have limitations. There's some things that we just can't do. You know, and, and, and that I just thought about that because I mean the kid was, I mean, you know, I I, I, I pray that he's, you know, finding something else to do. Uh, that will benefit him because football is not it, okay? And, and sometimes, <laughs> that's a nice way to say it. Sometimes, my wife was telling me about a special that was on TV and they was um, researching some of these people who do a lot of panhandling. And um, the gist of it was a lot of these people are panhandling, some of them, uh, because they have a habit. 
and awesome. you know people have fifteen hundred dollar a week heroin habits and they pay him but and it meets what they think is their need yeah. right and a lot of times people don't want to give because they think well this person gonna take this money and Thank go you. do yeah. foolish mm -hmm. stuff with it no, right. and it's so many times that we can look at the person on the corner and apply that mm -hmm. thinking, yeah. but you don't apply it to yourself Amen. when you want that million dollar job. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gonna go do? Yeah, with exactly. And uh, I believe it was Jim Carrey, the actor. He said, "I wish everybody could be rich just one time in their life, so that they can see yeah, that yeah. this money is not gonna fix their problems." Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's really, it's really not. Uh, trust me, it's really not. Uh, 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 and, and so, what happens is, what happens is, did you have your hand up? No, I was oh. just raising my hand on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so what happens is, uh, it, with all of the things that we talked about, we fully don't understand, and we that means a lot. We fully don't understand what prayer is. We don't understand uh, most of the time who God is and what He's able and going to do, right? Uh, uh, what, what He's able to do, as opposed to what He's going to do. You see that? Uh, most of the time we think he's, a, I call him either the remote control God or the genie in the uh, bottom. Mm -hmm. Because we think that we rub God the right way, which means we're we going to go to church the whole month, this month. <laughs> you know, we go, God, I'm, a, I'm, I'm praying and I'm asking, I'm going to fast and I'm asking that you just give me this house. We're going to do all the stuff because if we just rub God the right way, he's going to pop out and give us three wishes. Or you know he's the remote control god. You 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 sit you sit on the couch and be lazy like myself, <laughs> and you sit on the couch or you do uh, 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 what your parents used to do and what I do to my children now is that you call them way from out of the room to get the remote that's right over here on the table. You could have got up and got it yourself. I, I under I, now what uh, my parent my parents taught me a lot of valuable things. Right? <laughs> <laughs> My parents taught me a lot of valuable things, and one of the valuable things that they taught me is that is one of the reasons for children. Okay, thank y'all for that. That is one of the reasons, so that I can sit on my couch and tell them to come in here and get this remote. My wife get on me up. Why would you call him in there? Because that's my child. So he's gonna bring this remote, and he's gonna bring this remote, right? So, so, but, 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 but understand. <laughs> but understand. A, a, a lot of times we don't know what we ought to pray for. Right now, go back to. Uh, uh, now, can I say one thing? Yes, yes. These systems, these world systems, are mm -hmm. set up for us to focus on it. For example, the VA hospital is set up where if you're a social worker, you have a master's degree in uh -huh. clinical social work, you can get in there and you can get on this track. And I pray, Lord, let me go work with veterans mm -hmm. in the VA hospital specifically. Yeah. Because it's all geared around money. money. Because yeah. it pays yeah. social workers yeah. very, yeah. very yeah. well yeah. to get more stuff. This is yeah. not necessarily a spiritual connotation there unless a yeah. person is real focused, like he said. <laughs> yeah. But what it doesn't tell you, after you get in the master's degree level, mm -hmm. in order to help a veteran who may be suicidal, uh -huh. now the playing field is different. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and anybody can be suicidal, but particularly with veterans where it's on the rise. Yeah. Now you need to get your license in clinical social work. Yeah. You got to pass the exam, and you yeah. will Please. encounter a vet. You got fees. Please. You will encounter a veteran who is either homicidal, gonna kill somebody, or suicidal. Yeah. Now, what is the job and all that stuff? Yeah. Now, where are you gonna go? Now, yeah. what are we crap? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. Because the warfare is very, very real, but yeah. you don't think of that in the beginning. You don't think of that, You just that. think, oh, they, they, they pay no. top dollar, yeah. and I can get this, the house, this, and another. And exactly. it's just a slave that keeps you driven into that system. Yeah, and, and, system and, and, and a, a lot of times, uh, uh, I think about that because a lot of people ask me, uh, especially some of my employees, they ask me, uh, uh, well, do you ever think about moving up and doing that? No, I don't. And the reason I don't is because with more, with that money they pay you comes responsibility. That's right. You're That's not gonna, right. I'm not going to have the time to that do what I need right. to do. Right. Right? I think about my brother, my oldest brother makes a, a lot of money, good money. But he don't have the time to even call you back, right. okay? Because, <laughs> because he's so busy, right? right? And, and so understand now they they they're paying him for his time. That's right. Yeah. So therefore, because they paying him all that money, he got to do what they want him yeah, to do. Right. And so a lot of times, I know some of my family members they think he always calls me back, but he don't call <laughs> me back sometimes either, okay? And so, uh, but 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 and that's because he's always busy. He's always busy, okay? And, and the thing about it is, is that when we're praying for these things mm -hmm. that we think we want mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. 
again, we're ready to make the money, but we're not prepared for the responsibility of the work. I don't want to move way up there and make all that money because I need to turn. If that veteran dies and you miss something, Uh they're coming after your life. You You are liable to the VA and you can lose it all because you didn't ask one question. You missed one question. Thing. Yep. And then it's all over. Just yep. like and you don't think about that because, again, you your, motivation, yeah. uh, uh, your motivation is my. I tell the kids that play football all the time. If your motivation is women, you'll never get enough. That's right. If your motivation is money, you'll never get enough. That's right. You know, if your motivation is set on something material and temporary, you'll yeah. never get enough of it. You'll never get enough. Right? That's most times, most people, I want more money, more money. It don't matter how much money you got. Even when I was playing football, I thought I was underpaid, right? You know, and, and, and again, everybody, no matter what job you work, you, you think you're undervalued. No matter how much money you make, you think you're undervalued. Everybody thinks they're more. And, and, and typically, I, tell, I was telling a lady at my, at my job, uh, I said, listen, do you really understand that she, I, don't, I think they get paid uh, – Maybe what, $14 an hour? I said, just think about that. Eight hours out. You mean to tell me an hour of your day is only worth $14? Uh, there ain't no favor in the world. Yeah. You, you see, because others, now my time is, you know, and I talked about this last night, uh, 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 anything lost can be found again except for time wasted. You can't find time again. So $14 is really not worth my time, but you have to get a job. See, but all we think about is the money. We don't think about the time. The reason I love my job now, and I hope I don't ever want to leave, is because I have time to do everything that I need to do. I have time to study. I have time to go see my, my children when I need to. I have time to go help kids. I have time to take off to be my wife. I have time. I have time to do a lot of the things that I want to do. I got responsibility, but I need the flexibility because I have so much going. I need the flexibility. You see that? Yeah. And, and, see, and the, so most the benefits, right? And and that, and that's the issue because now. When you become, I don't want to say mature because I don't want to say people are less mature because they want more money. But but once you get to a point, you realize that I might I need the time, I need the benefits, I need the flexibility, and it's going to be hard to find a job that give you the whole package: flexibility, time, money, uh, 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 benefits. Uh, that's hard to find now. So you got to take what you can get. Even when you find it, it may not be permanent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Even when you find it, it's not going to be permanent, right? It's not going to be permanent. So, so when we when we look at the big scheme of things, and as we go through this, Paul says, "Pray without ceasing." So, be conscious of your prayer life. Don't let your prayer life slumber and falter because you understand grace now. But now your prayer life should be more and more. I should thank God more now because of what I know. Because before, I mean, we can all be real about it. Before, I hardly ever thank God when I pray. Because I thought prayer was just letting God know what I want. And believing it and I'll get it. Right? There was really no thanksgiving in my prayer. You said it, but you, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Even at the old church, we said, oh, God, I thank you. And holler out all this. But really, are we really thanking it? Or that's just some kind of show? It's the formality of it. Uh-huh. Became more and more of worship, thanksgiving. When you read throughout his epistles he, and his prayer for others, he always prayed for others. And he always prayed, uh, real quick, go to uh, uh, Ephesians 6 and 18. He always prayed for others and that this door of utterance may be opened up to him. Look, go to Colossians 4 first and then Ephesians 6 and 18. Look at Colossians 4. Continue in prayer, verse 2, and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Now, Paul is saying watch because a lot of times he's, our prayers, watch that they don't become selfish. Right. You see that? Watch because the, 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 the less you're thinking, thanking God, the more you're talking about yourself and what you want. 
okay? So he's saying, watch in the same with thanksgiving. Don't let your prayers become so selfish, right? Look at the verse 3. With, with all praying also for who? Us. For us. Why? That God would give us a brand new house and the job that we asked for. No, sir. Right? Good. Pray also for us that God would open up unto us a door of utterance. Right? That's what we ought to pray for. That God would open up the door of utterance. The door just meaning opportunity. Right? Just the opportunity to do those things. Right? Notice Paul is saying there. And now, what is he going to speak? The mystery, the mystery of Christ for which I am also in bonds. People don't understand now, it's not a compromise type of thing. Well, I'm just going to compromise in this situation because this person here might be the next mayor of the city. So we compromise based on who we are around. You know, when there's somebody who we don't think is nobody, we want to preach the gospel to them. You see that? But when it's somebody who we think is somebody, we don't want to offend them with the gospel. You see that? So, so, so listen, that's what Paul is saying. Paul was speaking the mystery of Christ, and he was in bonds for speaking it, right? Look at verse 4, that I may make it manifest as I must, well, as I ought to speak. It's ought and should when they're talking about grace as opposed to must. So Paul was talking about something that he ought to do. And he was saying for people to pray, because when we pray for other people, what that does is that produces performance. Right? When we pray for the benefit of others, that produces performance. Right? Look now, go to Ephesians 6 and 18. Look at Paul says. This is after he's talking about the uh, uh, the putting on the armor of God. Look at verse uh, uh, 18 here. Praying always, not just what? Sometimes, but what? Praying what? Always. always with all prayer and supplication in the what? Spirit. Now the spirit lusts against the flesh. flesh. So when you pray, it has to be in the spirit. spirit. Not in your flesh praying for all this fleshly stuff. Right? Pray supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for who? All saints. For all saints. Not just the ones you like. Right? But all of them. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's what they used to pray. This. Thank God for the saints. Pray for the saints everywhere. Right? And, 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 and that's a prayer that means a lot more to us now because the saints of God are, 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 are a minuscule compared to the overall. The, true, the uh, members of the body of Christ, right? It's a small thing for those of us who understand the doctrine. So we have to pray for saints everywhere being persecuted and talked about uh, and, and, and all manner of things, right? Because we're per being persecuted for the cause of Christ. Look at verse 19. And, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the what? Of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in what? So he's an ambassador in bonds. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Not what you think you should say. My mother used to always say, you can't say everything you big and bad enough to say. <laughs> right? Because a lot of times, because we think we're right about something, or because we're trying to prove somebody wrong, or because we uh, uh, have the authority to say it, we think we ought to say it. That may not be. I was talking to a, uh, uh, a person, I guess there's somebody that has a video uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, debunk, it says debunk Kevin Hobbs or something like that. Somebody made a video trying to say something about me. Yeah. And so somebody called me and was like, I just wanted to reach out to you before I say something to this brother. Mm -hmm. Because you know that just made me mad. Mm -hmm. you know. And I said, why are you mad? I said, they talked about Jesus. Who am I that they going to talk about me? Amen. You see that? See, but what I said, listen, I'm glad you did call me because now I can explain to you what you Minister ought to, to do. Right. You see that? Amen. See, because what you want to do is not going to come out favorable. Now, what you ought to do may go against what you want to do, but when we understand doctrine, we base things off the spirit and not the flesh Amen. because the flesh wants to do some things that we ought not do. 
Amen. And a lot of times, I, I, you hear me say this all the time, that sometimes I wish I didn't know the Bible as well as I do. Why? Because I want to do something that I ought not do. You see that? Oh, but you were just talking about Colossians 4, um, about God opening us the door of utterance uh -huh. to speak the mystery. If you go down to verse 6, it touches on exactly what we just read in Ephesians. Yep. It says, let your speech be always with grace. grace. Seasoned with salt. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. That you may know how you ought to answer there every you go. man. There you go. And you ought to have an answer for every man that questions your faith. Peter says that, right? Uh, that, that's how I, I get a lot of people who don't want to discuss the Bible with me. If, uh, if I'm asking you because you believe every word of the Bible, right? They say, yeah, okay, well, this verse in Second Peter says that you ought to give an answer to every man that acts and with the faith that lies within you. So if you believe that verse, and I'm asking you a biblical question, you should be able to give me an answer. Well, I ain't going to debate. It's not a debate. It's a question of do you believe God's word, right? And, and, and that's what happens. We ought to do these things. Our speech should always be seasoned with grace, even when you're angry. Right? Because it may edify somebody as opposed to tear down. Okay? And we're all guilty of this. We're all, including myself. Because there's a lot of times when I'm mad, I don't want to talk to you about no grace. Okay? I want to talk to you about the wrong you have done to me. Okay? And so a lot of times that gets us in trouble because now we're operating in the flesh who only wants what the flesh wants as opposed to operating in the spirit. Okay, and, and, and so so understand as we continue to go down through this, I'm going to end here, but understand what Paul is telling us about our prayer. Like we ought to pray without ceasing. Don't pray selfish. Pray for the benefit of others, right? Because the more Paul said in 2 Timothy 2 and 2 that uh, uh, the things that thou have seen and heard of me, the same teach, uh, so, that I mean, so that I may teach others also that they may be able to teach others, okay? That's the goal of ministry. Right? To speak something that's edifying. Even when we uh, uh, we do things with the kids. Right? There's a lot of things. And, and when I said what I said about the kid, I heard Jerry say, that's a nice way to put that. Right? Because sometimes you can let somebody down without destroying them. Because a lot of times people need to hear the truth so they won't fall on their face in the future. Right? When you let somebody do something thinking that they're able to do it, you're not, this is not for you. But there's a million other things that you probably have the ability to do. This is just not one of them. Right? Don't just stop at this. Okay? And so you can, we, we can do that because then our, uh, our, 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 our speech becomes seasoned with salt. What does salt do for your food? Add a little flavor to it. It preserves. Right? That's what we ought to be doing in the, in the life of a believer and those who don't believe. We ought to be building up edifying speech that it may edify the hearers. And it says, let your speech be always with grace. Not just when you're happy and everything going right for you, but always with grace, right? And we're all working on that, because I know I am, okay? We're all working on that, okay? And so, so understand that's what Paul is talking about, and we'll get to the rest of it, because he's talking about even walking in wisdom. Okay, because it's hard to let your grace be always with uh, let your speech be always with grace if you don't understand the wisdom of God. It's hard to love your enemy and those who spitefully mistreat you when you don't understand God. That, that matter of fact, it's impossible because it's, it's hard enough to do when you do understand God. Okay, so it's almost impossible uh, uh, to, to to love somebody that's just spitefully mistreated you, right? So we'll we'll continue to build this up. And uh, uh, continue to edify ourselves and our inner man that we may know how to act and behave. And our uh, conversation and our speech may always be seasoned with grace. That it may be edifying to whoever we come in contact with. Amen. Even on a bad day. Amen. 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 Any other questions or comments? Observations? Again, thank you all for coming. And uh, we'll pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your truth. Uh, uh, we thank you for who you are. Father God, we thank you for uh, uh, the time, oh God, that we shared here today. We thank you for the building that we're in. We thank you for uh, uh, just who you are. Uh, Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together. Uh, some people don't have the freedom to come together and study your word, but we thank you for the freedom. Uh, we thank you now that you, uh, the, through the technology, oh God, that we're able to get the word of God out. Uh, to all people across the world, Father God, for your will is that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. 
Uh, we ask you to give us the strength and the power to, to do your will, O oh God. Help us to understand that we're ambassadors and you've given us a message of reconciliation. Uh, we ask you to touch this ministry, touch those uh, here under the sound of my voice. Uh, Father God, we ask you to touch uh, mentally, Father God, uh, spiritually as well as physically, O oh God. We ask you to continue to build us up in our inner man that we, may, that we ought to walk and say the things that we ought to say. Uh, we ask right now in Jesus' name we pray. Touch those who are sick. Uh, touch those who are dealing with ailments. Touch Susan's foot, oh God, that she continues to recover. Uh, and continue, have a 100% a, a recovery, oh God, that she does, uses her foot as she always has, oh God. We thank you for that now. We thank you for the things that we so often take for granted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.